Hey everybody and welcome. Today I am going to do a quick tutorial and playthrough for Gon Schon Clever, a, a German release which hasn't actually been released yet in the United States, but is available if you want to try it out because it's simply a roll and write game. But it's the rare roll and write game that has actually been nominated this year for the Kennerspiel. So uh, it is a really clever game. And that's what Gon Schon Clever translates to from the German. It means pretty clever in English. And this is pretty clever. It's pretty quick. The solo game is very quick. And let's just get her underway and I'll show you how it works. Okay, so the dice have already been rolled, but let me first of all give you the overview of how this works. So in each uh, round, and there are six rounds of the game, in each round, you're going to roll the dice three turns when it's your turn. So even if it were a multiplayer game, if it were your turn, you would roll the dice three times. Each time you roll the die, the dice, you get to choose to use one of those dice, and that is to take the die, to place it on your uh, score sheet, so you'd put your first die here, your second one that you used here, and the third one would go here, and then, uh, depending upon what color you chose, you'd either activate something in the uh, yellow zone, or the blue zone, or the green zone, or the orange zone, or the purple zone. You'll notice there's a white die here. The white die serves two purposes. It's wild, so it could be a wild of any color. Well, it could be a value two in this case of any of, of five colors. And it's also used when you're playing a blue die, which I'll talk about in a moment. But let me talk about how each one of these zones works when you're placing a die. So let's say I were to use the, the yellow three. In that case, I would come over here and I would cross out one of the threes. Now, in the beginning of the game, there are two of each of the six values on this, on this, in this zone. So I could either cross out this three or I could cross out this three. And that would be it. That basically is how this works. But it gets tricky later on. I'll come back to that. As you can see, scoring for yellow is pretty straightforward. When you fill out a column, you're going to get the points shown at the bottom. So the most number of points you can get for yellow would be to fill out the whole zone and you'd score the sum of all these values, which looks to be 60. So that's how yellow works. The blue zone is very similar. However, when you're using a blue die or a white die as a blue die, because remember the white die is a wild die, you have to pair it with the other die. So the blue die gets paired with the white die, or the white die gets paired with the blue die. In either case, you use the sum of those two dice. So I wouldn't be, if I use this 5 or this 2 as a blue 2, I wouldn't be placing or crossing out a 5 or a 2. I'd be crossing out a 7, because you have to add these two dice together. So you can see there are 10 values you have to cross out. Clearly, you want to try to find ways to cross out. It, it's going to be harder to get a 10, 11, or a 12 as a sum, and it's going to be harder to get a 2, 3, or a 4. So the easy ones for, this, the, for the blue zone are going to be in this middle range, obviously 7 being easiest. Uh, points for the blue zone are scored based on the number of uh, values you've crossed out. Uh, did I say 10 values? There's 11 values. Sorry about that. Uh, there's 12 minus 1 because there's no 1, obviously. So uh, if you only cross out one value or one space in the blue zone, you're only going to get one point. But uh, this graduates to the point where if you cross out all the spaces, you'll get 56 points. So each one of these zones is kind of geared to get you close to 60 points, plus or minus. So uh, th that's how yellow and blue work. Uh, green, orange, and purple uh, work left to right. So you have to fill out spaces left to right. In the case of green, you're still crossing them out with an X, just like you did in the yellow and the blue zone. But here, you have to uh, cross out this space with any die. But you can only cross out this space with a die of value 2 through 6. Here you have to have a die of value 3 or higher, 
4 or higher, 5 or higher, and then it resets to 1. If you've only crossed out one green space, you'll score one point. If you're fortunate enough to cross out all of them, and in this last space you have to have a 6, um, you, uh, you score 66 points. So again, close to 60. Uh, orange and purple are different from the other zones in that you actually write values in these spaces as opposed to X's, as opposed to crossing them out. Orange can take any value in any space. There are no restrictions whatsoever. So I could put a 5 here and a, and a 3 here and a 4 here and a 6 here. But if I put a 6 here, you can see there's an X2. So I would actually write in 12 instead of 6. So you want to try to get uh, the high values when you get to these spaces. There's another uh, uh, 2x multiplier, another one. And if you get to the last space, um, it's a 3x multiplier. <laughs> purple also works left to right with values. Uh, there are no, no multipliers in the purple zone. Um, but each space in the purple uh, zone has to be greater than the space before it. Obviously, the first space could be anything. If I put a 3 here, this one has to be a 4, 5, or a 6. If I put a 5 here, this one has to be a 6. But once you place a 6 in a space, then the next space can be anything again. So it resets. And you score purple the way, same way you score uh, orange. You simply add up the values of the dice. But as I said, there are no multipliers. So this may seem pretty easy to you so far as I've described it. However, there's a little bit of a twist when you're choosing your dice. And that is, uh, when you choose a die, let's say I chose to use a, th a yellow 3 for my, in my first roll. Any dice that are lower than that value have to get moved to the silver tray over here. And there's actually, there's not a silver tray in the game, but the inside of the box contains this image of a silver tray. So essentially, the dice you that are lower than the value you choose are taken away from you, and they won't be available for future rolls. So it's clearly in your best interest for rolls one and two of your three rolls, at least, to roll to choose lower values, uh, so that you so that you have fewer dice taken away from you. In a multiplayer game, uh, after you've taken your three rolls. Your opponents each get one passive turn whereby they choose to use one of the dice that's on the silver tray. So you not only have to think about what dice you're using, but what dice you're giving up to your opponents. Uh, for example, it might not be in your best interest to give them the white wild die, uh, because that really can help them um, in, uh, in many cases. Uh, but... It, it all it all depends. So, well, you, you, but it is something you have to think about. And when your opponents choose one dice for their passive turn, they're only choosing to use the dice. They're not actually taking the die away from the tray. So, theoretically speaking, all of your opponents could use the same die uh, on the tray if they want to. There's no restrictions in that case. By the time you get to the third roll in every round. There, there, they can go hog wild. You could use any value because at that point your turn is virtually over, and you're not going to be have any dice taken away from you. Now, to simulate the passive turn, when you're playing a solo game, when you get to that last fourth roll, so to speak, quote unquote, after you've taken your main three rolls, then you uh, roll the dice again. You take the three lowest values and you get to use one of those three lowest values for your passive turn. So it's not quite as interesting um, as a multiplayer game, but it's still quick, quick, fast, puzzly, and the ramp up of this game by the time you get to the middle of the game is very, is really, really good. And why is that really, really good? It's because of these bonuses that are all shown in each one of these zones, these special icons. You can see the bonuses really rack up in the purple zone. When I fill out the third space of the purple zone, I'm going to get a free reroll. Now, anytime you use a reroll, they ha you have to reroll all the dice. You can't choose to use reroll only some of them. So it is not it's not the best bonus, but 
it's uh, sometimes you just get a lousy roll and you just want to try again. So um, uh, it comes in handy every so often. When I get when I see a, an X bonus uh, in a particular color, it means I can cross out any value I want in that zone. So a blue X would allow me to cross out, say, a blue two, because I it's going to be hard to get a blue two. Um, under normal conditions when you're uh, you'd have to get a blue one and a white one added together to get a blue two so that's how the uh, X bonuses works it's simply a cross out and it's usually gonna it's gonna be a blue X or a yellow X or a green X because those are the only zones that get crossed out a plus one doesn't mean you're adding one to the value of the die it means you get to choose an extra die uh, and that has to be taken at the end of your normal turn or at the end of your passive turn. And it simply means you get to use another one of the dice that are uh, available to, that were available to you from the last roll. Uh, not only the dice that are showing, but it really depend, it's, it's regardless of where the dice happen to be, whether they're on the tray, whether you're, they're on your score sheet, um, or whether they're still in the dice pool, any of those dice you can use um, as a plus one. Of course, you could chain plus ones together, but if you do that, you can't use the same die twice as a plus one for the same for using the same set of the six dice. So once you use, do a plus one, that die is essentially removed from your choices if you decide to use another plus one bonus. You can see you could have a number of these plus one bonuses rack up as many as uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them. And you can get po seven possible re-rolls. Uh, when I see a red fox, there are five red foxes on the, on the, on the game board. Uh, for every fox at the end of the game, whichever uh, color is lowest, you're going to get that as a bonus for each one of your foxes. So it behooves you to diversify and try to keep your scores in each one of the five colors as high as possible because if you do lousy in one color and only have and get a zero, you might collect four or three foxes, but it doesn't score you anything because it's multiplied by your lowest score, in this case zero. So you want to try to get even your lowest score to be as high as possible so that the foxes that you collected will score you a nice bonus at the end of the game. Um, finally, there are for orange, um, there are going to be orange values you get to fill in. In this case, I get to just put an orange six in the leftmost orange space. Here I get an orange five. Here I get an orange four. Um, so basically that's how all the bonuses work. And all of these bonuses can be chained together, uh, and that's what makes this game ramp up and get very, very clever as you get to the middle of the game, because you might get, say, to the fourth space of the purple track, which gets you a free cross out of the blue. And when you cross out the blue, it might give you a free cross out of the green. And when you cross out the green, it might give you another bonus. So all of these chain together over and over again. And uh, by the time you're at the end of the game, hopefully you're chaining, 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 chaining to get the highest score possible. Now, I haven't played this game a lot. Uh, I still need a lot of practice. So I, I'm only, uh, I guess what you'd say, middle of the road, so to speak. So, uh, But for purposes of this quick playthrough, hopefully I'll get a semi-respectable score. Let's see what happens. So it's my first roll, my first choice what do i want to use now remember i want to use something low if i use the yellow three i would lose the purple two and the white two so right now if i can i'd prefer to use the purple two or the white two the purple two would be a good choice because it would be it would allow me to put anything practically other than a one or a two in the next purple space uh, the white two of course can be used as any color and uh, I probably should use the purple too because you can see purple contains the most bonuses. So uh, I probably should use the purple too, but I'm going to demonstrate how the wild works. So I'm going to use the wild white too. So now I choose which color I want to use it as. 
and I will use it as, um, now if I used a 2, it would be added to the 5, and a blue 7 is not so hot. A uh, green 2 would work. An orange 2 is kind of low for an orange. I'd rather keep put high numbers in orange. There's that purple 2 again. I think I'm going to go with the yellow 2, however. I'm going to go with the yellow zone. Now, of course, at the beginning of the game, there are two of every value, so I have to choose which two I want to cross out. Uh, I probably want to stay on the diagonal because there's a bonus here and there's also a row bo bonus as well. So I think I'm going to go with this two. Now I'm into my second roll. And of course the white die has gotten moved to my score sheet. So now I'm only rolling five dice. The five that weren't lower than this white two. Of course none of them at the time were lower. So I get to choose from uh, five dice again. And again, I want to try to steer toward the twos. So a green two, again, would be a, a good choice. Orange two, eh. Uh, there's that purple two again. I guess I'll use the purple two now because I didn't use it before. Uh, but uh, at this point, really, a purple two or a green two is a, pretty much a toss-up. So there's a two now in my purple uh, zone. And I'm in my final roll. So far, I've chosen a white two and a purple two, and now I now I can choose just about anything because it's my, the last of my three rolls. So even if I choose a six in a solo player game, yes, these would be moved to the tray, but that doesn't matter. The tray doesn't really count in a solo player game because when you're playing solo, you do another reroll to determine what which, which dice are available to you. Um, but uh, so I can really choose anything here, and uh, an orange six would be nice. Green five is eh, kind of a waste. A blue five would get me a seven. Again, not so hot. I think I'll use the yellow three. So a yellow three, I could choose lock out this one or this one. I'll cross this one out again because it's on the diagonal. Now I'm doing the roll for my passive dice. So. Um, the three lowest dice are highlighted. Those are the three I get to choose from. Now, the, in the case, in this case, you could see I had a three-way tie. If I had a four-way tie, the comp my program would choose randomly. But when you're actually playing this game and you're rolling the dice, the rule actually says whichever dice, in the case of a tie, whichever die gets lands up closest to the tray, closest to the box with the picture of the tray. That's the die you would use to break the tie. Uh, so that's how the actual rules work when you're actually using the dice. My program takes care of that. So I can use any one of these. Um, I think a white four would be a good choice because that would be a, a blue, effectively a cross out of a blue ten. Uh, so I could use a white four as a blue die, or I could use the blue six as a blue die. Either way, it gets added to the corresponding white die, or the white die gets added to the blue die. Either way, I get a blue 10. So um, I'm going to use this white as a blue to cross out the blue 10. Now we're into round two. So you can see things kind of are slow at the beginning, but uh, they're going to start getting exciting, certainly by the time I get to round three, once I start racking up these bonuses. You can see at the beginning of round one, I automatically got a free reroll bonus, as shown here. Now it's the beginning of roll two, I get a free plus one bonus, a, 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 a use of an extra die at some point, somewhere along the way. Uh, but for now, it, remember, you can't use those plus ones until the end of your active or passive turn. Uh, roll one of round two, again, I want to choose a low die. A green one would be a good choice. A blue one would be a blue four, which would also be a good choice. Orange two is kind of low. Uh, purple five is tricky because it means I'd have to get a six for the next one. I think I'm going to go with the green one. Anything could go in that first space in green. So I'm still not scoring in orange or yellow. i got to work on that. I'm hitting yellow a lot because yellow doesn't score until you get a full column filled out. So that's why I'm going back to yellow a lot here. Um, 
Okay, so it's my second roll now. I could use any one of these five dice. A blue one would get me a blue five. One plus four is five. That would not be a bad choice. Let, let, let's use that. So there's a set, that's my second uh, value checked off on blue. So, so far I've got two points in blue for having two two spaces crossed out. Now I should say you don't actually score until the end of the game. You kind of have a rough idea of how you're doing based on how many cross outs and values you see filled in. So you can roughly figure that out, but you don't actually fill out the score sheet until the end of the game. My program can sort of do that for me uh, as as I proceed. So you can see I've got a total of five points so far. whoop de doo Okay, this is my third roll. I could use uh, any of the four dice. You can see that my program is telling me that the purple two is not available to me, simply because it's not higher than the previous space on the purple track. So, for my third roll, what do I want to use here? Um, I think I'm going to use the white two as a blue two. Because that would get added to my blue one over here, and I would cross out a blue three. And now it's the end of my normal turn for round two before the passive turn, but I, my program is asking me, do I want to use another die? For, because I do have a plus one available to me, the bonus that I got at the beginning of round two. I don't think I'm ready to use that. It's, it's usually better, unless there's a really good choice of, from among your six dice, uh, it's usually better to hold off on uh, using the uh, plus ones, I think, until you get further along in the game. But there are exceptions. We'll see. Right now, I'm not going to use it, and I'm going to go into the passive turn for round two. Okay, so the three lowest dice are the one and the two, and in this case, randomly, my program chose the three, the purple three. I could use a purple three. Uh, one, of course, I could use is just about anything. I think I'm going to go with the purple three. It may not be the best choice, but you just never know in this game. So I'm going to go with the purple three. A three goes here. Again, I'm getting asked if I want to use uh, another die because of my plus one from among these dice. Maybe I do, actually. This white one is kind of nice. Let's see, I could use a yellow two or a white one as a yellow one. You get this one in the, uh, this one on the diagonal crossed out. Yeah, I'm going to just say yes, and I'm going to use the white one as a yellow one and cross out this yellow one here on the diagonal. So now you can see that uh, in each of the columns, except the last column, I've already filled in half the, half the uh, spaces I need to get the score. And uh, I'm one space away from getting this plus one bonus on the, on the diagonal. So I'm going to cross that out. Now the beginning of round three, you can see I got another reroll bonus. Those are not terribly valuable because uh, remember you have to reroll all your dice. So you have to really have just a lousy set of dice to choose from to use a reroll bonus. Uh, okay, uh, so the only dice I can use here are these. Can't use a purple one, can't use a blue three because the blue five is already crossed out. So um, Green two would probably be a good choice. A three, an orange three is meh. Uh, a yellow five again would get me back to the yellow, but I just I just feel I need to do better in on the green track here. I, I want to keep all my tracks up, and I haven't even done anything on orange yet. I'm looking for high dice to get onto the orange track. Uh, for now, I'm going to use the green two. That means the purple one is going to get taken away from me, unfortunately. So I won't have it available to me for my next two rolls. So the green one's over here because I just got this green two crossed out. It was the second space crossed out using the green two. The purple one's over here on the tray because it was lower than the green two that I chose. And now it's my second roll in round three. I 
think I still want to go back to yellow. I really want to get something on the yellow score. I also want to get something on the orange score, but so far I've only seen really low orange value. So I'm going to go with the wild, the wild one as a yellow one, which crosses out this face. And now it's my third roll. So a yellow five. Uh, yellow five still doesn't get me a score, but it does get me close. A blue six is equivalent to a seven, not so hot. And an orange two, again, is, is only so-so. So I'm going to use the a yellow five. I'll use this one. I don't think it really matters, but I want to get uh, get some more progress in this fourth column. Now it's my passive turn. Wow, the three lowest dice are pretty high. Um, I could use the orange four. I could get on the orange track. Actually, uh, well, again, the yellow five still doesn't get me a score, but it's so close. Um, green five is okay. Uh, it's one space. I'm one space away from getting a plus one bonus on the green track. I lied, I guess. I'm not, at least in this game, I am not getting bonuses chained up as quickly as I would have liked. Um, let's go with the yellow five. That gets, gets this crossed out. And now it is the beginning of round four. And in round four at the start, you get a choice. You get to either cross out a value in the yellow, blue, or green zones, or you get to put a six in the orange or purple uh, zones. Your choice. And I really want to get something happening in yellow, so I think I'm going to use the cross out of any yellow. Well, I could use it to score here and get an orange bonus. Or here I could get a green bonus. Okay, I'm going to use the yellow cross out. I think. I'm going to use the green bonus because I want to get close to this plus one. So I'm going to use this. I'm going to use this bonus to cross out the four. That's going to get me the green bonus automatically, so that it will x out this space. And now we're into round four. So nothing too exciting has been happening so far, and you can see my score is a paltry 15. But I'm hoping to change that real quickly. So I can use a, a blue 2 would be a blue 4. A green 5 would get me my plus 1. But of course then I would lose all four of these 2's. I really want to use a 2 here. <laughs> all my oranges are 2's. Uh, use a white 2 as a yellow 2 and score and get an orange bonus as a 4. I think I want to use the blue two as a as a blue four because two plus the white two makes a four. And again, that gets me close to that five orange bonus and just uh, I want to do better in the blue zone. So I'm going to go with the blue two. Now it's the second roll of round four. I'm going to lose the purple one, unfortunately, because uh, I can't use it, and it's going to so it's going to go to the tray. If I use the white two. I could use, okay, I'm going to use the white two as a yellow two. That's going to get me a score of 10 points in yellow and also get me a orange four bonus, which I've been putting off. So I'll use that as a yellow two, which gets a four in the orange zone. And now I've got points in each one of the zones. And it's roll three of round four. Okay. Um, uh, okay, I want this plus one. The five in orange is nice, finally, but uh, I do want to get this plus one bonus from green. So I'm going to take the green four, take the get the plus one bonus. Do I actually want to use it? Well, maybe I should and just use the orange five. So yes, I'll use it now. Maybe not a good choice, but I'm going to get use the orange five because I've got to do better on the orange track. So now I've got a five here, and we're into the passive choice for uh, round four. You can see the three lowest dice. I only I can use one of these dice. Uh, 
and I can't use a reroll when I'm doing my passive turn. At least that's my understanding of the rules. So um, my only choice is to use the uh, orange five, but that will get me another reroll. Of course, I haven't used any reroll bonus yet so far. We're already into round five, and uh, I've gotten up to 46 points, but that's awful. A good score is 200 or more. Can't use the yellow one or the purple two or the green two. So I think I'm using this white two. So I don't, so, so my damage is that I'm only going to use the yellow die. If I use the white two, I can only use it as a blue or a or an orange, I guess I'm going to use it as a blue too, which is going to get me the seven. Eh, but whatever. Okay, roll two of round five. Ugh. Well, the four gets multiplied by two, so it's an eight. That's my only choice, but the trouble is I'm going to lose all my dice, so I won't get another roll. I won't get to use another die, so this is a lousy choice. I have to use a reroll here. So I'm using one of my three rerolls. Uh, not much better. But a purple four would be okay. It gets me another reroll bonus, gets me close to now where I'm at the point where I'm going to start racking up these purple bonuses. So I'm going to go with the purple four. Gets me a reroll bonus, and now I'm into the. basically into the fourth space of the purple track. Now I am into roll three of round five. I've got to make something happen here. Um, the green five isn't great, and the blue six is an eight, which is, neither one gets me a bonus. Um, I'd like to do better on the green track for now. So I'm going to go with the green five. And now my, I've reset on the green track, so I can put anything on the green track again. Um, passive dice, I got a 2, a 3, and a 3. I can't use the yellow 2. Got a blue 3 or a white 3. Of course, this is wild. And I'm tempted to use this as a yellow 3. Uh, blue six is okay as well. I'm doing so well on in yellow. I really want to continue that. Um, I'm going to use the white three as a yellow three. So now I've only got three spaces left in the yellow zone. Um, and where am I here? Roll one of round six, and I have no plus ones. Come on, this is lousy. Round six, and I got a Lousy 59 points. Okay, I've got to really not embarrass myself here. Okay, a green one gets me a blue X, and a blue X is going to get me a... Uh, no, a blue X could possibly get me a, another bonus. A white one, obviously, is a wild one. I'm going to use the green one to get a blue X bonus. And uh, since it's so hard to cross out the blue 2 anyway, I'm going to cross out the blue 2, which is going to get me an orange 5 bonus, which will get 10 points in this space in orange, because it's got a 2x multiplier. So I'll take that. But, of course, now I'm into roll 2, and I'm not doing a lot of chaining here. An orange 1 is a lousy orange, but it gets me a yellow cross out bonus, which would give then either get me the 20 points or the 14 points in a blue X. Purple 5 gets me also gets me a blue X, but I can get the blue X that up by using the orange. And the white, of course, I can use um, the white one would be, a, I can't use as a blue. So I think I'm going to use the orange one. Lousy orange, but it gets me a yellow X. I'm tempted to get the 20 points. Oh, yeah, if I get the 20 points, then I also get the plus one bonus. Well, 
and it is rule three of my of round six. Damn, the game is virtually over here. Um, so a blue two would get me a blue eight, and a white six could be a yellow six. You know, that would be a better choice because that gets me a blue. It could be a green six and get me a fox. It could be a green, a yellow, an orange six to get a plus one. It could be a purple six. And I'm doing pretty lousy in purple, which would get me a blue. Okay, I'm going to go with the, uh, the white six. So I think I'm going to use it as a yellow six, which gets me a blue X. And I'll cross out green bonus gets me a fox. And this one, the 11 is harder to come by, gets me a purple six, which gets me another blue bonus. So I'll take, I'll take this one. Gets me a purple six, which gets me another blue cross out. Uh, so I'll take the green X. That gets me a fox. So now I've got something happening here, but purple's still pretty awful. I've got to get that score higher. Do I want to use another die? I've got a one, one, uh, I think. One one six one two four. A yellow one is no good. The white six though would get me another plus one on purple or green or orange. I'm gonna yes, I'm gonna use the white six as either orange or purple. Well, I'm doing worse in purple, so I'm going to use the 6 in the purple to get me up to 21, get a plus 1. Do I want to use another one of these dice? Let's say yes. Although I probably shouldn't waste it, but I'll take the orange one to get another plus 1. Do I want to use this now? Um... Yeah, do I have any other plus one bonuses coming up? Uh, no, this is my last plus one. So i got to either wait till my passive roll or make something chain well. Um, this gets me another fox. Uh, Purple four, a blue, a, a green one I can't use, a yellow one I can't use. Maybe, maybe I shouldn't use it. I think I'm going to hold off on my plus one, see what I get on my passive roll. It's a little bit of a gamble, but let's see what happens. So for my passive die, this makes it eight. And I still have a plus one to use. A green four doesn't get me anything, but it gets one step away from a purple six, which is the same as that. So I could use this as a green. Uh, let's use the green four. Now I'm automatically using my plus one. So I don't want to use the purple, well, the purple six gets me a yellow X, but the white six as a green gets me a purple six anyway. So that gets me two for the price of one, so to speak. Okay, I'm going to go with the white six. I'm going to use it as a, an orange six gets me 12 points, but no, no bonus. So I'm going to use this as a green six, which gets me a purple six, which gets me a yellow X which crosses this out, fills out yellow, and gets me another fox, and that's going to be it. And my final score is, two is 239. Okay, with two foxes. That's not bad. It's still middle of the road. Would have liked to have done better, but... Um
that's basically where I've been playing so far. So uh, anyway, that's how this game works. You can see it's real thinky, real quick. It's quick. Um, if you're not talking about what you want to do, you just kind of think about it, and you're looking for the best chaining possible. This is a really clever game. Really clever. Pretty clever. Gone schon clever in my awful German accent. Hope you like this uh, playthrough and tutorial. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye-bye.